So I wanted to talk to you today about one of my favorite topics, being able to code efficiently and effectively with whatever tools that you like to use. So this is all about being one with Angular, and you know, Angular's one with me, because the right tools can make a huge difference when you're coding. So what tools do I like to use? I like to use the Angular CLI. So what do I like to do? I like to roll with this kind of a command. I create a new app. I tell it I'm going to have routing in there at some point very soon. So add the routing features right out of the gate. Because as we all know, routing is awesome, but it takes a few things to kind of hook it up. The CLI does that. I also change my prefix for my components right away to whatever my prefix is going to be. Maybe I want to roll with SAS. I can set that up right out of the gate as well. And then I do the dry run. The dry run will show me what are you going to create and I can verify it's going to do what I'm expecting it to do. And then once it's happy, I remove that dry run flag. And then I run it again. Pretty easy to get out of the box, up and running, with inside the application. So let's say we want to do some other stuff, too. So over here, let's say we create a, create a list of rebels, because we like rebels, right? We've got to have like Jin or so and some other folks in there. So we can say NGGC, and we'll create a rebels component. All right, it's going to add that component. It's also going to declare it inside our module. Well, I also like to create models for us. I want to create a, a rebel model. So I could say ngg class, or cl for class, and then I could say rebel. It's going to add that single file with a, a class there for, called rebel. That's cool. And maybe I want to create a data service so I can go hit like an Azure function up on the web. So I can say ngg service, or just s. You catching a trend here with the aliases? Pretty easy. It's kind of nice to do. Dash data. Now, with services, what is the thing we always forget to do with services in Angular? Yeah, provide them. So if I do this with a dry run flag, dash D is an abbreviation for it, it'll warn me and say, John, and I'll say, yeah, CLI? And CLI will say, you forgot to provide it. So now I can go back in there and I can say, dash M, please put it in the app module. Now notice what it's going to try to generate with a dry run. There's a new command at the bottom, update app module. Now, is that cool or what? We can add and provide services on the fly. Now, there's something really interesting about this application. With AngularJS, I would argue that it's extremely difficult to get lazy loading to work. Lazy loading was not easy with that. With Angular, it's easy. So in this application, the planet screen is lazy loaded. When I click on planets, Notice there's a new chunk coming across. The Angular CLI automatically detected I was using a lazy loaded route. And it created a code split bundle and then loaded it on the fly. Like, no effort on my part whatsoever to do this. That is awesome. <laughs> You're thinking, how does that work, John? And I'm like, I'll tell you, hold on. So right here, we've got an eagerly loaded Rebels component, and then we've got a lazy loaded Planets component. We simply use the string syntax because we have to use a string because it can't have a symbol, because otherwise it would be eagerly loaded. So we simply do that, and the Angular CLI is going to detect this, figure it out, and then load it for us, which is just wicked cool. The really cool thing about the CLI is that it's not that it's taking your job, right? It's taking away the monotony of our jobs. It's getting rid of the, the boilerplate, and it's making it easier to work with. As Angular gets faster and faster and faster, the CLI will evolve and do those things for you so you don't get left behind. <laughs>